We are Stephen and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show. We answer that and more. Stephen Jill here. Hey. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Vitella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about the topic called, how much do flood zones really matter? Are we still talking about this? What the heck are flood zones? Really? Is this really this, this is important? Yes, it is. Slash, however, is it worth spending weeks on this? Mm-mm. We're going to talk about it. There's a lot of discussion going on in this. Way too much discussion on this. Federal government is taking it upon themselves. To map out once the again, the entire map out once the, again, <laughs> that goes without saying. <laughs> right. <laughs> to map out the entire country and tell us all where the flood zones are. That's nice. I'll let you decide if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I personally think it's a good thing, and they gauge it in a map about when stuff floods, and it always does, always, where the water should go and what should be built there. And so we'll talk about if your property's in, in a flood zone, exactly what to do. How excited should you really get? This is Jill's one of Jill's favorite topics. Oh, I love she, this. She loves talking about oh, flood zones, sure. driving for dollars. Oh, yeah. Uh, she loves Escrow talking about agents. data. Yeah. Mm. I love how long things take. <laughs> 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 Jill had an interview. I keep thinking about this. I don't know why. Jill hired a personal assistant recently, and uh, she had an interview. And, uh, you know, she comes back from these interviews. This is a in person hire. So they'll like, they work next to her. Right. Now, they don't work in, in uh, Remotely. Canada. Yeah. Yeah. And this, she's, so she came back from this interview. And as always, I'm like, how did it go? I mean, I'm, I'm like secretly hoping that she found the right person. And yeah. she walks through the door and says, she likes pretty things. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to work. <laughs> not going like to work. floral arrangements. And there's nothing wrong with floral arrangements, but that's just not the first thing that you want somebody to say in an interview as a personal like, assistant. Like, where's my desk going to be and what's it going to look like? Huh? What? <laughs> Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members <gasps> on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. And if you're already with us, uh, check out desk Discord. Deanna wrote, Hi. I thought I would post here seeking inspiration. I signed up for Land Academy in September 2020. I sent out maybe 2,000 to 2,500 mailers thus far. I had quite a bit of callbacks and sellers who were interested. I've not actually bought any property for I do not necessarily have the capital to do so. I instead have a few active option contracts and also reached out to a few investors, but to no avail on the investors. The properties I have under option have been there now for three to five months. Option is difficult because the seller wants what the seller wants, so it seems that the price is usually too high. I figure I will go at it anyway because I'm not losing anything out of it. Now that it has been seven months and I still have not made a deal, I'm feeling a little disheartened and already looking at other career paths, but I know this one can be very successful and lucrative. I assume I should set up more mail. I'm having a hard time putting more and more money into the game and have yet to see any of it come back. I would love to hear some advice or words of inspiration, whatever you've got that you're open to share with me. Um, and then you, what was that note? It's a note to us. Oh. There are this. There are probably 15 people that responded to this oh. in Land Investors. Did they say knock it off of the options? Some of them said, here's my advice. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps and close some deals. Yeah, buy it. One person said, that's what the Thursday calls are for. Yeah. For you, for you, you. Every Thursday, Jill and I do a, a webinar for the members, and mm -hmm. it became, "Would you do this deal?" A lot of it. And so, yeah. for hours, we review people's deals and, and give people opinions, as do everybody else on the call. Like, yeah, I would do it, or yeah, I'll fund it. Yeah, you know, it became a, a huge success and a huge benefit to being a part of Land Academy. Right. And so, this person, for whatever reason, I can go on and on about the responses, but. And if you care, you should go to Land Investors and look this up. Listener, I mean. You got to, um, this is a classic example of taking the ball to the 50-yard line. You know, yeah. she's, uh, she did everything right. She got the mailers out. She, she obviously chose the right place to send mail. People are interested. 
Um, options suck. Mm -hmm. You should never do an option, uh, mm -hmm. especially at the beginning of your career. It's complicated. It's riddled with negativity and stigma. Uh, and, and people that have to spray themselves off with lifestyle uh, at, at the end of every day are really good at options. And so what you need to do is buy some property real cheap with confidence. Right. And if you don't have any money, call us. Yeah. There's, There's a, plenty just, of money sitting around here. Yesterday, the, the question in this slot of the episode was a person, a, a person, professional funder mm -hmm. that's ready to fund your deals if they're good. Mm -hmm. I almost have to like arm wrestle with some people like funding deals, you know, like I'll fund it. And like, and then somebody else got it for, before me. I'm like, hey, good for you. But I'm like, there's so a lot sounds, of money in this group. So we talked about career path yesterday. Dina's, is, is it Deanna? Deanna's roadblock Deanna. is she can get the generic deals mm -hmm. and she's just not, she doesn't have the confidence yet to know if they're good. Right. That is such a solvable, easy roadblock in my opinion. Right. That's what Land Academy's for. We have a whole thing in Discord now where you can, it's called, would you do this deal? And, and people are using it this week for some reason. There's probably mm -hmm. 25 properties in there and people are just jumping all over it saying, heck yes, I would do this deal or no way. And here's why. There's a couple of different things that could be going on too, Deanna. Number one, we cover the money and what to do and just get going. But you're saying the sellers want what they sellers want. I think those should be deals you're probably kicking to the curb. If the sellers are asking too much money, right? And now you're putting it out there and it's three to five months and you have no bites. It's not a deal. It's you either, yeah, you either not reaching the right people or it's overpriced. And why is it overpriced? Because you're agreeing to buy it for too much. So you need to, you need to kind of, I would start fresh come back at this a different way and do all the things that we talked about. Don't give up. No, no, don't give up. Don't look at another. I mean, I, I would really challenge somebody to come for, I'm, I would love to hear what other way could you, especially in this climate right now, make the returns that we make. Um, can you think of any other product type? Cause if it's, if it's out there, we'll do it. You know how to generate leads. Yeah. Let's call them leads. You know how to generate potential deals. You know, you might not be, here's my gut. And this happened with, happens with the people, every career path, there's somebody or every every group that we have, there's somebody where I say this and the light bulb goes off over their head. You have to have somebody like Jill contact these people. There's that. Or either you need it. For me, it was a lot of years, a lot of very painful phone calls and painful work days for me. Yeah. You know, I don't but suggest- you did it. Yes, I did it, and I got through it, and I was yeah. reasonably successful at it. Nothing like what Jill is. You have to find somebody in your life, and there's tons of people in our group. You're already in the group mm -hmm. that can make these phone calls back for you where you split the deal, and they turn these prop these transactions into deals. You did the hard part, in my mm -hmm. opinion. You got you figured out the data. You got it in the mail. Got your phone you, ringing. You got your exactly. There's always deals in there if, if if they're calling back saying, "Yeah, I'm interested in selling." You need somebody like this to turn it into a deal and then babysit it through. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Today's topic, how much do flood zones really matter? This is the meat of the show. This, this comes up every few months probably or, you know, you know, throughout the year. People get hung up on flood zones. Why? Well, one of it is we check them. We show you where to do this. We know we have an overlay on, I don't know if it's on Parcel Fact, but it's on Neighbor Scoop. It will be on Parcel Fact here soon. Can I set this up? Okay. <laughs> your property, you, you, a property comes back from your mailer. You go into Neighbor Scoop and you click on the little flood thing that we created. Right. And it's a, a literal real-time overlay from FEMA, mm -hmm. Federal Emergency Management Administration. And your property is either in a flood zone or it's not. Well, great. I don't want to buy any properties in a flood zone. This is where the, the issue becomes. Uh, this is where it becomes an issue. It's like, yeah, it's in a flood zone, but, and then there's fifty mm -hmm. buts, and that's what Jill's going to talk about. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, like number one, that was a perfect setup. Number one, if you come back, if you're saying, "I'm brand new, I don't want to do any deals in a flood zone," uh, okay, here's the thing. I guess you're not doing anything in Phoenix. <laughs> 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 or a lot of metropolitan areas, yeah. or the state of Louisiana, Louisiana and exactly. Alabama, and Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Florida's oh, and, a good and one. And South Carolina, <laughs> most of Southern Texas. Yeah. So what you need to do, so let's, let's. I'm going to talk about the big picture stuff, and then we'll talk about some details, like what's really important. But so the thing is, 
you have to take perspective. There are a lot of places that are in flood zones and it's solvable. So you'll notice when you look at your look at your property, it comes in, you click on it, it's in the flood zone, but hold on a moment. You look and you see building, 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 building. Like all these buildings are in the flood zone. Okay, there's ding, ding. That's insight number one. I don't need to panic. They've solved it. It might be something really small like, the foundation has to be three inches above, it just can't be whatever. There's there's usually a little thing like that. Um, and we're gonna talk more about that. But and my other big thing is Are we? Well, you want to talk more about that? Oh why? Why? <laughs> I you can hate make it. this so simple. Go ahead, you talk. I have one word for you okay. to figure out whether or not you should buy a property in or around a flood zone, and it's relativity. There you go. One word. If your property, if you pull up a property and it's not in a FEMA flood zone, then then you don't care about this topic. And actually, maybe you should turn off your radio or however you're listening to this. Radio. Listen to some music. Radio. Turn off the podcast. There's other there podcasts There we go. There. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> go ahead. Here's what really happens and why people, uh, why this hits our customer service so much. My property's in a flood pl uh, plane. What should I do? To which my answer is this. What's going on with the other properties relative, uh, to the, relative to this property? If your property, if you look, pan out in neighbor's scoop and there's a flood zone running through some metropolitan area and there's nothing built there at all, you can actually like watch where they stopped building around this flood zone mm -hmm. and your property's in that flood zone, don't buy it. Now you know. Now you know. Yeah, it's easy to see. If you, on the other hand, pull the property up, click on the little flood zone thing in neighbor's scoop, and your property is in a, every single property on the whole screen is in a flood zone. And it's completely developed like a metropolitan area like Phoenix and Louisiana. There's tons of places. Florida's in a, our entire state of Florida is in a flood zone. Yet they still build on it. Mm -hmm. Because whoever is issuing permits to build stuff, they've gotten around that mentally. And the insurance companies have gotten around it. And that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And they, they, make, they know what to do to make concessions to make it okay. So you're, you're, like looking at a, foundation. you're looking at a piece of property yeah. and every single property right around it is built with a house on it and they all have the same flood zones. You're going to be good That's in funny. general. I was watching like, I was watching a house hunters on HGTV TV, and they were doing um, a build and uh, it wasn't house hunters. It was some show on HGTV anyway. They were building this home in Florida and wherever this home was, every single one of them, they had to be way up off the ground. So what they, it was like 10 feet. So everybody ha it was every house was on stilts and you park your car under there because they don't care about the car kind of thing. So that's, you know, that's, you watch, there's things like that that goes on and that's how people solve it. So it's not an end of the world situation. I have one last point I can make if I'm going to Yeah, and I'm, okay. I have some stuff to say at the end. Too. Okay, good. My one last point to make is, please make sure you're not just making up excuses and using this as a thing like, oh, I can't do this. And because some people do that, things come back and they're wonderful deals and they find 16 things like they're trying to find too many problems or, and it's usually an indication like they just don't want, they're afraid to pull the trigger and buy it. And I just want to caution you that that's not you. Use the relativity gauge. The people that uh, signed your offer and contacted you, they already own property in a flood zone. That's true. They bought so, it in a flood zone. So now you have to ask yourself this. They signed my offer. They've owned it. Uh, it's in, Let's say they bought it for 20000 bucks a few years ago. You sent, sent out an offer for 8000 and they signed it and say, yeah, I do want to sell this property. And so you take a little screenshot. You send it back to them and say, you already know your property's in a flood zone. And it's probably not buildable. How about I give you 1000 bucks and just end the misery for you? Because I know I can sell it for 2000 is there anything wrong with that financially or ethically? Absolutely not. Somebody assigned an APN to flood zone property and somebody expects you to pay taxes on that, meaning the, the county. So there's always a deal there. Mm -hmm. Usability is for the property that where you want to make a bunch of dough. But there's always some number where all real estate works mm -hmm. or most or all with the very, very few exceptions. I think we covered it, and I'm sure there's a lot of no notes in Discord on that too, and land investors. So, and just ask those questions; we'll keep answering. This is a puzzle, this business. Mm -hmm. A little bit. It's not like day trading, where you buy a piece of stock, it goes up or down, and you resell it, and they pat yourself on the back and go get a martini. That's not this business model. There's a lot of moving parts and great wealth to be made 
as a consequence to that. Excellent. <laughs> Happy to join us today. Five days a week, you can find us right here on The Land Academy Show. Tomorrow, the episode on The Land Academy Show, well, it's Jack Thursday, where I talk about counties you should never send mail to in 2021. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Everybody loves that stuff. Oh, oh that's sounding what? like a secret county list. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's nothing secret about these terrible counties. This is true. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> if you need access to any sort of ownership or property details, like we just talked about, including owner phone numbers and FEMA flood map overlays, check out neighborscoop.com or parcelfact.com. Created by investors, that's us, for investors like you. We're, We're Stephen, Stephen Jill. Jill. Information. And inspiration. To buy undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 